he passed Arthur where he was sitting uncomfortably on the black iron bench. There was only one bench in the park, or to be more accurate, only one bench worth sitting on. It faced the sun, if there ever was any, and you didn't have to walk too far into the park past the teenagers and the drunks. Its proximity to the dog poo bin was not ideal, and the black iron burnt the back of your legs in the summer and dug into your spine awkwardly. But Arthur still found himself loitering nearby until it was free. All right, mate. Arthur replied. That was another thing Arthur didn't like about the bench. It was too close to the path, and people sometimes stopped to talk to him whether he wanted them to or not. Robert thought that he and Arthur were friends, and he was always happy to see his friend sitting on his usual bench, drinking his usual can of Carly. Arthur couldn't remember who the guy was. Oh yeah, 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 man. I'm all right. Yeah, man. It's been madness at the depot today, man. He worked at the swanky new Amazon warehouse that had been built on the far edge of the park. Arthur was struck by how excited he managed to seem about it. Far too hot for it, man. Been there since six this morning. But it's good work, man. Oh yeah, what a good thing to be a part of, man. Arthur wasn't sure he would be so happy about working in a sweaty metal box slinging spoil people's packages around all day. He forced a grim smile in an effort to show he was listening and lifted his now warm tan to his lips. He'd been hoping to have a second one on the bench before he had to head back inside where Abby was waiting for him. But now the second can was weighing heavily in his jacket pocket. He'd wanted to enjoy it in silence. Well, I'm going to enjoy a cider tonight, man. I'll tell you that. I like the Thatcher's ones. There's a shop near me, man. Just up that way. He pointed as if Arthur might want to check out this corner shop for himself. I do a can of Thatcher's for 185, which I like, man. Because I can't buy a whole crate, man. I live on my own. Arthur raised his eyebrows in what he hoped could seem like a sympathetic way. Anyway, enjoy your beer, man. Robert had never been good at spotting when people weren't listening to him anymore and was prone to talking endlessly. But now he had his mind on his cold can of cider, so left his conversation with his friend Arthur there. See you later anyway, man, he said, as Arthur lifted his can to him and forced another half smile. Arthur hated being rude. He tried to stop himself, but he only had a small window to be alone. He had to go home soon or Abby would start to get suspicious. He hated being rude, but he couldn't help feeling like that guy had stolen something very precious from him. He knew he was being ridiculous. He rolled his shoulders backwards three times in an effort to shake that feeling. He'd only been delayed two minutes. He'd just have to drink the second can quickly. He didn't want to go home without thinking it. Abby had been tearful lately, and he had it figured out now. Two beers before he walked in the door helped him to appear appropriately concerned. Abby thought that he finished work at half six. He was doing her a favour. If he didn't drink his two cans, he'd be too impatient. And if he had more than two before he got home, he couldn't make his face look as worried as she apparently needed it to look. He saved the third one to drink as he sat on the kitchen chair while she paced back and forth, pleading, why us? To God knows what, and becoming more and more upset. Arthur had listened intently at first. He remembered his heart aching for her pain. He had tried to grab her, wrap her in his arms, and stop her pacing and her tears. It was understandable, he thought, that after the hundredth time, he had been unable to soothe her. He had stopped trying. She wanted something, and he had been unable to give it to her. He remembered the days when he would race to get home because he knew she was there. He would throw the door open and scoop her up in his arms so that she would squeal and giggle helplessly. He didn't even want to wait to close the door behind him before he could get his hands on her. And now he put off going home for as long as he could. This thing had come in between them, and no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't
couldn't seem to reach her on the other side of it. He closed one eye and peered down inside the can of the fluffy golden liquid. If he pretended that the bus hadn't turned up, he could buy himself another ten minutes without upsetting her. He drained the rest of the lukewarm liquid in the can and sat with it empty in his hand for what he estimated to be ten minutes. When he finally stood up from the bench with heavy feet and red lines pressed into his back from the bars, he saw the guy from the warehouse only fifty feet down the path, wasting someone else's time.